thank you so much for staying with us on We On Wallet. And we've got a whole host of panelists here talking about the global impact and the economic impact that the U.S. presidential election will have. Now, Jasper, we were just talking about uh, the anti-policies. And you had some interesting point to make when we were on a break offline with me. Well, I think it's a simple point, Chatey, which is that um, it's very hard to see the policies in this election through the fog of rhetoric, uh, bluster, uh, abuse and the rest of it. I mean, I'd be very intrigued to see if, if our fellow panellists have spotted policies that either appeal to them or don't. Right. Uh, Mr. Rena, you seem to agree with him. Yeah, I think, uh, see, what's happening uh, is that people are trying to give quick fixes. Uh, they're trying to appeal to voters by giving some shortcuts to them, saying that oh, we'll do this, we'll do that. Quite populist. So, very populist. So, right. it, therefore, there's no such, like uh, Jasper said, no such concrete policy which is really and uh, visible uh, from both sides. Right. I'm going to go over to Roddy now. Roddy, we, this question was asked to Mr. Bhargava before we went into the break about the fact that international trade has been a point of emphasis for Trump now. He feels that America has really entered into horrible trade deals with the rest of the world and he might just call off the NAFTA. What kind of an impact is the globe going to have on the policies that Trump is bringing to the table in terms of uh, the countries globally? Well, I spoke to um, a friend of mine who was the uh, British ambassador to Washington, and he very much described Trump as a neo-isolationist, which, uh, if that is true, it, it is indeed quite alarming. But I think a lot of it is, again, rhetoric, like we've heard from, from the other panellists. And so I think at the end of the day, he will be influenced by the business community. He is a successful businessman of a sort himself. The chance of him really cutting the US off, I think, is much less likely. Uh, I'd just like to raise one other uh, point, and that is that whoever wins, an important uh, decision, whoever from the president, will be the appointment to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is, of course, uh, has a huge influence on legislation going through, and the judges have the appointment for life, and there is a vacancy which Obama had previously tried to fill but was unable to. So depending on whether a liberal or a conservative is put in, it will have quite an impact as to how much latitude whoever the president is to get through their policies. Mr. Bhargava, you ended up joining us a little late into the discussion, but that's really a question that I really wanted to ask you. Now, two years ago, we had Barack Obama and our Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who set the goals of increasing the bilateral trade to 500 billion US dollars, really, by the year 2020. Now, should the Indian government keep this expectation alive, no matter who comes into power, really? What do you have to say about that? You see, I am of the firm opinion it is not individuals who dictate these days. It's the country's requirement. Now, India, as a major economy, emerging economy, US, a huge market, they will continue to build on the foundation that has been laid by the Barack Obama and Narendra Modi, various agreements that they've entered into. You cannot be expecting that the next incumbent in White House will not be taking a pro India stand as far as NSG membership is concerned and other things are available. They will all be pro-supportive because India is a huge, huge market. Let's go back 10, 15, 20 years ago. They were not very friendly to China. But because China was a huge market, emerging market, America and China built up a very strong bond. And India is far better place than what China was 20 years ago. So whoever gets into the White House, we are not unduly concerned. As I said earlier, an individual speaks at an election rally. But when you sit in a chair and take decisions, it is not only your set of advisors, it is the Senate, it is everybody, and plus the counter pressures and the lobbies who come at work. So your decision that you will be taking will be influenced by several, several factors. And you cannot simply ignore that, look, I'm going to be taking a totally different line unless there are serious compulsions, like Mr. Donald Trump, for example. He says it very clearly, he is anti-terrorist, terrorism. He will not allow those kind of things. Well, 
he will have to find justification and do it prove it beyond beyond doubt look at the counter counter balances counter countering of these balancing system whether it will affect trade whether it affect employment whether the business opportunities there will be a whole lot of people who will come and start influencing and let's not forget in america lobbying works Absolutely, Mr. Bhargava. Thank you so much for that insight. Stay with us. Now, with America going to polls, the global stock markets have been in a bit of a frenzy in the past few weeks. Now, market analysts from India's financial capitals give us an insight on the impact of the U.S. elections on the Indian markets in near future. We have with us joining us live from Mumbai, Abhimanyu Sofat from IAFL. I'm going to start with you, Abhimanyu. In this election, we're seeing a lot of uncertainty. The one thing the traders around the world hate most is, of course, uncertainty. Asian indices have also seen a roller coaster ride recently. Indian markets, also the Asian queues are not ogring down well. What do you have to say about that? How do you see the markets pan out in the next couple of weeks? Yeah, uh, so clearly what we feel is that uh, the event which we have uh, in the next uh, less than 12 hours is going to have some impact on market volatility over the next three to four days. Historically, if you look at the U.S. election from a one-year perspective, we have not seen much of a difference uh, on the Indian equity market uh, as a result of the elections. Uh, in uh, 1992, we did see that uh, the market had come down uh, during U.S. election, but that was probably, at that point of time, there were a lot of domestic issues related to stock market in India, which had factor in at that point of time. So, uh, considering the policies uh, of Trump as well as uh, Hillary Clinton, I don't see a very major impact uh, over a long term. Uh, clearly, on the outsourcing part uh, related to IT industry, you could see some kind of repercussions in case uh, Trump comes. Obviously, all of us know that Hillary is clear uh, winner in exit polls and other opinion polls uh, till now. And uh, the pharmaceutical industry, where you would see that the Obamacare, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, differences between Hillary as well as uh, Trump. So how that impacts uh, the uh, that industry is something keenly that everyone needs to watch out uh, right. for. Uh, yeah. Right now, the Asian indices, like I mentioned earlier, have seen a bit of a roller coaster ride recently. Now, what's your long-term view on their stability, really? Now, after the FBI clean shit was given to Hillary, Asian markets did stabilize. But last entire week, I was tracking the markets down, and they didn't seem to be behaving quite well. And we saw a fair bit of correction set in. So, uh, you know, uh, there's also a thing that if uh, Hillary comes back, then you are going to have an increase in U.S. interest rates, which might lead to some kind of outflow of capital uh, from emerging markets. So that is another concern which people are having, which is counterbalancing uh, the impact of a Trump win. So if you look at it, I believe that uh, structurally uh, economies like India, Indonesia, uh, where growth potential is quite good, uh, we'll continue to do decent uh, over uh, long term uh, within the Asian pack. Now, you know, when the Brexit happened, we saw a bit of a knee-jerk reaction on the markets. I'm going to bring in Mr. Bhargava here to talk to us about the impact that this election is going to have on the markets as well. Mr. Bhargava, if you remember, during the time the Brexit uh, uh, announcement happened, we saw the markets tank quite a bit. You think this is the same kind of impact we are likely to see in India as well? Well, if you really look at the Brexit example, there was more speculation than reality what had happened. It had its impact on one day and then everything was back to normal. Here, yes, there's no denying that Indian market and all investors have been very cautious as to what are going to, who's amongst the two are going to be the winner. The moment FBI director said there is no prosecutable evidence as far as the emails are concerned, we saw the Indian share market losing on the losing trend. Now, why it happened? Of course, it has been pulled down, A, for the banking, B, on the pharmaceutical shares. As I said earlier, pharmaceutical companies, particularly those who have up to 30, 35% of the business in the United States, are fearing reduction in their revenues because of fixing of low prices for generic medicines. If that happens, it will have an impact on the, on the pharmaceutical companies. IT companies, yes, could be another one because if you hike, limit the visas or hike the visa fees, it has a bearing on it. But when you look at largely, as I said earlier, India is a huge market. 
There is business potential for the American companies here. There is potential for Indian companies. And no president would like to take a decision that upsets India as a growing economy and India, which offers so much of opportunities to US business people. There has will be a very calibrated approach to it. So I do not fear, irrespective of who gets into the White House, you may see a temporary slowdown in the Indian on the Indian stock exchange market going down by a few points, which analysts will call it correction, but then it's going to go up again because ultimately the fundamentals are strong. Uh, right, so you don't see any kind of sharp depreciation or a sharp bungee jump that the markets are going to face or any kind of strong volatility that would set into the markets. Now, I'm going to go over to our markets expert. Now, what do you have to say about Mr. Bhargava's opinion on the markets? He says that there would be an impact, but the impact would just be temporary. After a while, we will see the indices recalibrate as well. Mr. Abhimanyu, are you yeah. with us? Yeah, I'm there with we're, you. We're talking about the equity market, and Mr. Bhargava just mentioned that any kind of a reaction that will come in will not really be a knee-jerk reaction, but rather it will be a knee-jerk reaction, and nothing really long-term as such. What do you have to say about that? Do we, are we, do we have to brace ourselves for a fair bit of volatility to set in or not? Sure. So I do believe that there will be some volatility over a period of a week or so. And after that, everything would be settled. And everyone's eyes is likely to be on the U.S. Uh, interest rates, uh, which, uh, every, uh, you know, the analyst expectation is by December, you would see some kind of a hike happening. And especially with Hillary coming in, uh, the likelihood of that is going to be higher. And how the market braces for that, considering that the interest rate differential between the Indian market and the U.S. market uh, on the debt side will reduce so that could bring in new set of volatility uh, from us having said that uh, i would agree uh, with mr bhargava that overall uh, there's a lot of strength in the indian uh, market and if there's a big fall that will happen in the market because of any negative news of this election it should be used for investors you know to buy stocks because clearly what we are seeing in the market right now is that there are very limited opportunities to make uh, money uh, considering the valuation and growth not coming back. So if there is a correction, uh, so investors should use that uh, to accumulate you know, their favorite stocks in the market. Right, I'm going to come to Jasper now. Jasper, you have a bit of a view on that as well yourself. Now, what do you think the markets are going to react and especially the European indices? What is the kind of pressure that they're going to go through? Because I just checked the indices right now. They're already trading in the red. Are they bracing themselves for some sort of a surprise there or some sort of an uncertainty that they are predicting coming their way? Well, I'm not sure the European markets are behaving any differently to the Asian or the, or the US markets. Right. Um, I agree with both the previous panelists right. in the sense that um, should, should a Trump presidency be announced, there'll be some period of volatility as everybody works out um, uh, what the next steps are. And for some period, if Trump gets in as a fresher, he will need time to, uh, to get his feet under the desk. So how long that period of stability is, uh, instability is, uh, who knows? Um, I think just commenting on the Brexit piece, um, the, bre the market reaction to Brexit, I think, was one of shock. Um, I suspect that if Trump gets in, it'll be a matter of surprise and not shock. And while those two different plebiscites um, share things in common, not least uh, the voter being fed up, right. uh, in the end, they're very different scenarios. Um, and I think uh, you know, what's been happening in the markets in, in, in the UK and Europe as it relates to UK equities is much more to do with the underlying complexity of Brexit, which is a very different scenario in the States. Uh, Roddy, I'm going to come to you. Do you think we have to brace ourselves for any kind of a surprise on the downside as far as the Indian indices are concerned? I, I agree largely with what's being said. I, I don't think too much of a risk, apart from if, if Trump got in, there have been estimates of a possible reduction on Wall Street of 2 or 3% even more. So the, the impact on India would be global rebalancing of portfolios uh, of, of funds being forced to take um, funds out of India in order to rebalance their global allocation. That, that would be the risk, in my view. 
Now, as far as the commodities are concerned, I'd like to bring in Ajay Kedia of Kedia Commodities. Now, will a Donald Trump victory be negative, really, for emerging markets, including India, as it could create demand for gold and bonds, really? Mr. Kedia, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, see, as already uh, updated, if, uh, uh, let's suppose, Trump uh, wins in this election, and already we have seen a reaction, since last week, gold prices had moved towards thirteen hundred dollars. But I think this is uh, this will be a temporary bounce. Overall, we expect uh, prices will stay in, uh, price will stay in a very narrow range because this is a temporary factor. Once we are out of this election, definitely prices uh, for gold will be stabilized in, in the range of uh, twelve forty and uh, thirteen fifty. No doubt, the uh, election has uh, created some uncertainty, and because of whenever there is an uncertainty. People do buy gold, and we have seen prices move from 1240 to 1300 dollars. So overall, we expect this election should be uh, slightly uh, creating, uh, we can say, uh, uncertainty in the market that is been slightly supportive for the gold. But as uh, Hillary is uh, now leading, so maybe a collective drop towards uh, 1240, 1250 would be there in uh, <coughs> international market. Coming on domestic market, as uh, we love gold, and already we have seen that year by year we continue to consume gold. No doubt, uh, yesterday we have seen a report from uh, uh, WSG that uh, this year the consumption has been slightly dropped purely because of high price prevailing whole of the year. So maybe this uh, opportunity of fall uh, due to election would be a bright chance to uh, again uh, buy gold. And what about the dollar? Now, this is an open question to all our panelists here today. Do you all see the dollar really strengthen on the back of increased flow in U.S. assets at the back of this election? Anyone who w wishes to answer this can go ahead. Could we have Mr. Abhimanyu with us? Or Roy yeah. with us answer this question? Yeah, Abhimanyu is right. What does this mean really for uh, the dollar? Do you see the dollar strengthen on the back of uh, increased flow in U.S. assets really? So I believe that uh, there is likelihood to be a strengthening of dollar considering that U.S. also is going to increase interest rates. So that will uh, get a lot of focus on dollar and considering that a uh, lot of economic policies uh, of you know either Trump or Hillary are likely to become more oriented towards the U.S. Uh, manufacturer over a period of time because we've seen a lot of division in uh, U.S. over last couple of months where people are talking about, you know, a lot of agreements that have been done by U.S. which are not uh, in its favor. So clearly looking at that, I think so there could be some flip to the U.S. Uh, manufacturing sector. And with rising interest rate, I feel uh, that dollar going up is... Uh, something that uh, we should all base for, which in a way is something which is good for the Indian uh, IT sector, I must add. No, no, interesting you said that the dollar might strengthen. That also means that there is going to be some sort of a depreciation coming on the rupee compared to the dollar as well. That's right. So that's uh, something that, you know, as an exporting uh, country to U.S. is something which could uh, be positive for uh, the IT sector. Now, you know, both the candidates, now this question really goes on as a winding question to Mr. Kedia, who's uh, standing by with us on the phone line from Mumbai as well. Now, both the candidates have a bit of a diverse view on the environmental policies. Hillary is on one side big on combating climate change. Trump, on the other hand, wants to roll back the existing policies as well. What kind of a pressure would coal and oil be facing going forward? See, coming on gold first, uh, see, already market has been shown its interest that uh, the things and policy lineup with uh, Trump will be slightly um, may uh, generate some uncertainty in the market. Whenever there is an uncertainty, definitely gold will be here. And already we have seen gold prices move uh, significantly. So we hope to suppose the things have been in favor with Trump. Maybe gold prices we can see once again around 1350, 1380. Also, it will be helped by uh, this Britain IP that will definitely in quarter one we can see gold uh, getting very much support. Coming on crude oil prices, uh, no doubt uh, things will be slightly volatility uh, that will be creating for crude oil prices also. But I think uh, traders should uh, wait for OPEC and non OPEC decision that would be more impacting as compared to this election and all. 
but I think uh, crude should stay as of now in a range of forty-two and fifty dollars. All right, leave it at that, and thank you so much, all you gentlemen, for joining me on We on Wallet special on the U.S. election today. Thank you so much for tuning in to all our viewers. News and updates continue on the other side as there are just hours left before we know who the next American president is going to be. Thank you for tuning in.